Thousands of years before modern psychology and theories of self-fulfillment, the Greek philosopher Aristotle sketched a rich vision for how to live a full life, and not one, but two books which have come down to us, the Eudemian and the Nicomachean Ethics, which are essentially field manuals of happiness, telling us what to do and how to live in order to be happy. For Aristotle, happiness is about becoming a complete person, which means developing virtues like courage, temperance, wisdom, greatness of soul, and self-discipline. These virtues allow us to live and experience life to the fullest. Just like a well-built car drives better and has more capabilities than a poorly built car, a virtuous person lives better, lives more, than the unvirtuous person. The virtues are mobilizations of our human potential, and happiness follows when we actualize ourselves, when we function at full capacity. Consider the virtue of courage. Fear tends to cause a lot of misery for many people. We are ruled by anxiety. We spend restless nights worrying. Because we are afraid of going out of our comfort zones, we miss opportunities. We fail to live. Courage gives us peace in the face of fear. It brings stillness against the emotions that rage around us. And it allows us to go beyond our fears and do things we are afraid of. And thus, courage allows us to really live. Courage overcomes the petty fears that keep us from living. But true courage is also wise. Thus, it keeps us from doing stupid things that put our lives in peril. It keeps us from taking dangerous risks, from foolishly gambling and losing money for no reason or from being one of those people who die taking a selfie on the edge of the Grand Canyon. Or think about the virtue of temperance. Again, we cause ourselves so much misery through overindulgence, overeating, drinking too much. A bad diet can sap energy from us, make us depressed, and destroy our bodies. We make our lives shorter, more painful, and unattractive to ourselves as well as to others. If we don't take care of our bodies, but instead destroy ourselves with bad diets, we won't live complete lives. You literally take years off your life with a bad diet. But food is also one of the great joys of life, so you don't want to completely deny yourself the pleasure of food. There are a couple of Hebrew proverbs which say, My son, eat honey for it is good, and the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. But if you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. He is vulnerable and weak. This applies to controlling our appetites as much as it applies to controlling our emotions, which is why Aristotle says that it is so important to control emotions like anger. Anger can get you in a lot of trouble for no reason. It is a fire that will burn you as much as it burns other people. The classic example of antiquity was Achilles, whose unharnessed ruinous wrath brought unnumbered woes upon the Achaeans and hurled to Hades so many heroic souls, resulting in the death of Greeks and Trojans, but also in the death of his best friend Patroclus. And ultimately, his anger led to his own untimely demise, a fate he would come to regret when Odysseus visited him in the underworld. You too might regret the damage your anger causes, especially if you can't go back and undo it. But anger can also be a good thing. If you let people trample on you and take advantage of you all your life, and you never get angry and confront them, you'll end up bitter and resentful. Don't let bad people or bad circumstances stop you from living from doing what you want. The right amount of anger, at the right time, actually frees you from things and people that encroach on your life. And in doing so, anger helps you live a full life that is not tyrannized by anything outside you. You have to find balance. Aristotle envisions a broad range of experience and a wide-ranging life which sets him apart from a lot of other philosophers like the Stoics, for example. While the Stoics said that emotion should be stifled, that you should never be moved to anger or fear, Aristotle says that we should experience the full range of emotions, since they have a built-in purpose which we should exploit and fulfill. But we should do so in the right ways, at the right times, and to the right extent. As for pleasure, not only is pleasure not a bad thing, but pleasure actually completes our lives, according to Aristotle. Now, pleasure completes the activities, and therefore, life, which they desire. When we enjoy what we do, pleasure intensifies our activities and brings life into a higher definition, a greater resolution. Pleasure invigorates us and helps us 
to live more. But happiness isn't just about our internal character, it's also about the world around us as well. The complete life needs not just internal goods, but external goods as well. This sets Aristotle apart from Plato, who thought happiness was a kind of self-sufficient independence from the world. Plato said, you don't need things outside of you in order to be happy. Limit your desires and you will feel full. But for Aristotle, happiness exists in a matrix. It exists in the world. And the complete life is a give and take with the environment around us. It involves having good relationships with the people around us, having friends, which is why Aristotle talks so much about friendship. It involves having a good spouse, good parents, and good children, even being good looking. The man who is very ugly in appearance, or ill-born, or solitary, and childless, is hardly happy. And perhaps a man would be still less so if he had thoroughly bad children or friends or had lost good children or friends by death. All of these things are puzzle pieces which complete the picture of the happy life. Without them, our lives are incomplete and fragmentary. Because of this, Aristotle concludes that happiness is not altogether in our control. It partly depends on chance and fortune. It depends on whether or not you are good looking. It depends on things that are outside your control, like the behavior of your children and friends. Nevertheless, Aristotle is hasty to add that happiness is still mostly dependent on us. Yet even in these bad circumstances, nobility or beauty shines through. When a man bears with resignation many misfortunes, and not through insensibility to pain, but through nobility, beauty, and greatness of soul, if activities are, as we said, what determines the character of life, no blessed man can become miserable, for he will never do the acts that are hateful and mean. For the man who is truly good and wise, we think, bears all the chances of life becomingly, and always makes the best of circumstances. As a good general makes the best military use of the army at his command, and a shoemaker makes the best shoes out of the hides that are given him, and so with other craftsmen. And if this is the case, the happy man can never become miserable. Happiness is not just about the good times, it's about preparing for the storms of life as well. The bad days and the tragedies, that is why you have to develop your character, that's why you have to be virtuous. It's about making the best use of the life that you are given. If you truly develop your character, you cannot become unhappy. If you want to know more about what Aristotle taught about friendship and greatness of soul and the beautiful life and how they pertain to happiness, then check out these videos.